Welcome to another edition of INN CEO Talks. Joining me today is Alf Stewart, the chairman of Searchlight Resources, which trades on the TSX Venture under the symbol SCLT, on the US under the symbol CNYCF, and on the Frankfurt under the symbol 2CC2. Searchlight Resources is a resource exploration company with a growing portfolio of high quality, advanced stage exploration projects close to existing infrastructure in Canada's premier mining jurisdiction, and that being Saskatchewan. Yes, Saskatchewan. You know, I last spoke with Alf uh, in uh, mid-April when we discussed the company's remarkable turnaround. And now just four weeks later, Searchlight has acquired the Robinson Creek Gold Deposit. This is a high grade project consisting of seven claim blocks and it's just 15 kilometers from the company's number one property, the bootleg claim. And the bootleg lake gold project is located in one of the most productive areas of gold in Saskatchewan. Already, I mentioned that Saskatchewan is a great mining jurisdiction. Well, this is a remarkable area, uh, high, uh, high, high uh, resource uh, deposits. Um, there are four small-scale mines that have produced uh, high-grade gold uh, within the, the company's uh, portfolio. And now, Searchlight, in a press release uh, just the other day, said it has now acquired what they say is a natural fit for them. Uh, once again, that company has identified a neglected Canadian gold mine uh, with strong potential. Joining me now is Al Stewart, the chairman at Searchlight. Al, you remain busy. Tell us about the uh, Robinson Gold Deposit. We're very pleased and excited to uh, to announce the acquisition of uh, Robinson Creek. We've been working on this for 10 months. And our thesis has, has been that the Flin Flon Greenstone Belt hosts significant gold deposits that have never been mined. So we focused on gold deposits close to Flin Flon. And we've basically got a, a circle of about 20 kilometers around Flin Flon, where any gold deposits that we own and can develop can be part of one large mining operation. Robinson Creek fits that criteria. It's only 15 kilometers west of our bootleg project. Our bootleg project has four uh, former producing gold mines on it. Some, some mines were operated in the 1930s, some in the 1940s and most recently in the 1980s. The Robinson Creek property was being drilled by uh, the Saskatchewan Mining Development Corporation, which was a crown corporation owned by the government of Saskatchewan through the 1980s. And they completed multi-year campaign of drilling. There are over 75 drill holes on the Robinson Creek property. And uh, there are three vein structures there's high grade gold all over the place. And there are even some bulk tonnage targets. Uh, the best intercept uh, in terms of potential open pit, we have one intercept that's uh, 55 meters of uh, two and a half grams of gold, starting from 20 meters below surface. So all of this drilling was done in the 1980s during a period of low and declining gold prices. Back in the 1980s, gold was $350 an ounce in Canadian dollars. Today, gold is $2,200 an ounce. And even correcting for inflation, the gold prices uh, that were in place when this property was explored were only half of what they are today. So we think this is a very uh, exciting time to be exploring for gold. We think this is a very significant gold asset, but we have to go back into the property and look at it with uh, modern eyes. And that means we're looking for something much bigger, possibly in combination with our existing uh, gold deposits, perhaps the, some of the parts will be something much bigger. And we need to locate the historic resource and verify that it's there. Uh, the new uh, disclosure policies that exist for public companies, Local Policy 43101 requires us to verify these numbers. We believe the data because it was done by a Crown Corporation. Much of the gold was double and triple assayed. So we think it's good quality data but we must go in and locate it and verify it for ourselves. Uh, so that's the next step in proving your thesis, uh, which it sounds to me uh, uh, has got all the, the hallmarks of uh, something that is 
probably uh, going to be relatively easy for you to, to determine uh, whether or not that resource is there or not. Yes. What's surprising about this, uh, this was one of the premier gold uh, properties in the province of Saskatchewan in the 1980s, but nothing has been done here for over 30 years. So it's really a hidden gem. It's something that we were excited to uh, find out about it and excited to negotiate a deal. It's taken us 10 months, but now we can tuck this into our portfolio, as you call it, a growing portfolio of properties around Flin Flon and, you know, announce to the, to the market and to the world that there is significant gold deposits around Flin Flon. Flin Flon's a historic gold and uh, base metals belt, but it's mostly known for copper. Hud Bay Mining has a base of operations in Flin Flon and is a major global copper producer. And so the Flin Flon belt's known for copper. There's over um, 30 copper mines that have been developed around Flin Flon, but there are also 30 gold deposits around Flin Flon and the market doesn't know about that. And that's what we're focused on at this time. So what's your immediate next step? We've got to get out to that property. We've got to find those drill holes. We've got to verify this data and compile a resource. We think there's a significant amount of gold there uh, to be found. Will you be putting a, a drills in the ground then? Uh, not immediately, no. Our, our first step is to verify the historic data and model it in three dimensions and see where it points to the best drill targets. So first we have to establish where all of these things are located. Most of this stuff was done before GPS existed. These days, you and I can go to a property and use our GPS device, and it'll tell us exactly where we are on the Earth's surface. Well, in the old days, they had cut grids through the, through the woods. They only knew approximately where they were. Uh, we need to know exactly where these things are in order to, to uh, guide our exploration. Okay, so you've got a, a little bit of a, um, you know, a research to do here, like by having boots on the ground and going out and figuring out exactly where those holes are and then to confirm uh, the, that resource. It seems like it's right. going to be quite an interesting process that probably take you through the summer before uh, you're going to know what next steps are. Would that be uh, an appropriate amount of time? Yes, but from that point onwards, I think things can proceed fairly quickly. If we were exploring a virgin gold property, each drill hole would cost us about $40,000. And simple math tells you that we're sitting on about $3 million worth of drilling. And the process that we must go through is locating where those holes are exactly and mapping that out in a three-dimensional model. And, and bringing it into the digital age so that uh, uh, moving forward, you'll know exactly where everything is. Exactly. Wow. And so we can count the, the number of ounces of gold that exist on this property. Well, Al, I, you know, you continue to surprise me with your uh, with your announcements and the remarkable work that you're doing. Because, as you've said, you um, you're focusing on neglected gold and uh, rare earth mining resources, and uh, there's tremendous potential there. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and I hope that you're going to come back soon and give us that update that we're all uh, keen to keen to hear. Thank you. Thank you ever so much for taking Thanks. the time to of this conversation today. Thank you.